Our lesson comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. Here ends our lesson. Our gospel comes from the book of John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was a thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. Um, this weekend, we enter the fifth and final weekend of Lent uh, before next week, which is Holy Week. And so the title of our message for this day is Dying to Live. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this Wednesday night at our midweek Lenten program, we were talking about um, how God comes to us through science and nature. And each of us, we went around our group and each of us shared um, one aspect of nature or of God's creation uh, where you really profoundly experience God's presence. And for some, it was at the ocean for some, it was the wind. For some, it was the little critters of the uh, earth. And um, many people were not surprised to know that for me, it was trees. I've had a relationship with trees since I was a very young girl. And um, I shared the fact that I've had three very special trees throughout the course of my life my childhood tree, which I would run to and climb up and sit in the branches when I was going through a hard time and um, pour out my heart there to God in the arms of that tree. Or if I had a joyful event, I would climb up my tree and share that with God. And I was very sad when I, as a young woman, would, woman went back to visit my childhood tree and it had been cut down. And then, years later, when my husband Ted and I uh, were 
dating, we would ride our bicycles through Newport and about halfway through our ride, we'd be at Fort Adams and there was a beautiful tree where we would stop to rest and have a drink of water. And we began calling it our tree. And when we got married, that we got married under the branches of our tree there in Fort Adams. And so a few years, just a few years ago, we noticed our tree was not looking very well. It was starting to look sick. And then we went on vacation and we came back and that tree also had been cut down. So the last few years, I've had a special tree in Newport, a, an amazing, glorious beech tree with huge outstretched arms. And I would ride my bicycle and stop and just lean against it and pray there at that tree and felt strengthened and sustained by this amazing tree. And this last week, this tree was cut down. So I have been deeply grieving the loss of this tree. In fact, of all three important trees in my life. But then we have this week's gospel lesson where Jesus says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And then Jesus uh, says what he has said in one of our lessons just a few weeks ago, which I spoke about, those who love their life will lose it, but those who are willing to lose it for my sake um, will keep it for eternal life. And then Jesus says, now my soul is troubled, and what am I to say? Father, save me from this hour? No, Jesus says. It is in fact for this very hour that I came. And the final line of the gospel is, um, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. So sisters and brothers, as we enter this final week of Lent, it's a challenging week. The cross, we are drawing closer and closer to the cross. Um, and as we journey, we are invited to look very deeply at our own lives and ask ourselves, what is it I need to die to in myself, in my own life, in order for me to rise with Christ this Easter? and have that newness and fullness of life that Christ came to bring. In fact, this whole season of Lent, and most especially Holy Week, is all about dying and rising. It's about Christ dying on the cross and then rising to new, resurrected, eternal life. But Christ didn't just do that for himself, for his own purposes. Christ did that for us, to invite us to look at our own lives, to examine our own lives, and to die to our old selves, to our old patterns, our old way of doing things, our old habits and actions, and our whole old way of looking at life our old perspective. And as Paul says in Romans 6, all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized, baptized with him into death. We were buried by baptism. We were buried with Christ into death so that as Christ rose from the dead, we too might walk in newness of life, 
That's what this season is all about, sisters and brothers. So what is it you need to die to, especially as we enter this, the end of this Lenten season, this final week of Lent? What is it you need to die to in your life in order that you can rise with Christ to, to have that gift of a new beginning, a new life, a new uh, set of patterns, a new way of looking at all of life. That is the invitation of these, re of these readings. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh, the great Buddhist teacher, um, who I had the wonderful blessing of doing a workshop with, I got to meet this um, spiritual giant in person. And when I say giant, he, he's a very tiny man. I was very saddened. He died just this past fall. Um, but yet I was so deeply grateful that I had the opportunity to meet him in person and to study at his feet, to sit at his feet. And Thich Nhat Hanh said something that will stay with me for the rest of my life. He said, there are two things that unite all human beings, deep suffering and deep love, and that they are always connected. Um, we wouldn't suffer so deeply if we did not love so deeply. So deep suffering and deep love. And, um, and I think of this in terms of Lent and Holy Week for ourselves. What is it um, that we need to die to um, in order that we can rise with Christ? Well, dying is, is suffering. It's not easy to let go of our, of our old selves, of our old patterns, of our old way of looking at things. When we, when we try to do that, we will, we will experience some suffering. Dying is never easy. But the, on the positive side, what we will gain, the abundance of new life that we will receive is so uh, worth the, the struggle, if you will. And, um, and so I think of someone years ago, um, a relationship I had where we were really struggling and we ended our relationship. And this person, um, we got together after, some time after, and the person said to me, this person said, uh, when we ended our relationship, he said, I... Um, was really hurting, and I spiraled. I spiraled inward and downward. And he said, but I look at you, and I see that you've spiraled upward and outward. In other words, our ending of our relationship kind of plunged him into deeper suffering and brought him to a not good place. But the suffering of ending our relationship um, kind of deepened and expanded me. And so suffering, Thich Nhat Hanh says that. He said, he said, suffering can either shrink us, which is what that man said happened to him, it, this, this suffering of ending this relationship shrunk him, but it expand, the suffering expanded me, or that was his observation. And I actually think it did, it did expand me. So whatever suffering you might be experiencing right now in your life, it can either shrink you or it can expand you. Um, today at our Bible study, uh, we were talking about um, the fear the fear that we live in right now with the pandemic and with health issues and with these vaccines and and it's just it, and it's been over a year where we're exhausted from this living in this fear and uh but we talked about it was a bible study of course so we talked about as people of faith we cannot 
keep slipping down into that place of fear and looking at life through that lens of fear. Um, that, again, shrinks us and makes us spiral inward and downward. No. As people of faith, we are to look at even things that are overwhelming, like this pandemic. And we are to look at it through the lens of faith, and that will help us to... Uh, to, to open and to expand us. And to, uh, one person said it makes us so much more compassionate to others. It helps us to realize that, that everyone on the face of the planet at this moment is struggling with the same thing we are. And that can really expand us and our sense of oneness with our entire planet. Um, so as I was preparing for this sermon, um, I got a phone call from someone that right now in my life I've really been thinking about and praying about, and um, we've had some struggles, present time struggles in, in our relationship, but we love each other deeply. And I, I really um, was talking to my husband about this relationship and saying, I just look forward to the day when we can move past this, we can move forward, we can reconcile. And this week, I uh, just today, I got a phone call as I was finishing up this sermon, so it's kind of ironic. And this person and I uh, talked, and out of the blue, we came to this place where we both said, we very much want to work on our relationship and, and really seek to reconcile. So it was like here um, in this final uh, week of Lent, I feel like, and let me tell you, especially with this person, it's going to be very hard work. I know it's going to be hard work because this person is a hard worker and we will both work hard at our relationship. But um, it was like seeing a green shoot coming up in the midst of the hard-packed earth. It was like seeing that, that seed that Jesus is talking about beginning to rise. Now the green blade rises. And uh, so there is this hope. Um, a couple of days ago, we celebrated St. Joseph's Day. We had St. Patrick's Day on Wednesday and St. Joseph's Day on Friday. And last week, I spoke of St. Patrick's. So for just a minute, I want to share, uh, because this theme for today, dying to, to live, um, St. Joseph, the father of our Lord, can speak profoundly to this theme. I think about him so often he uh, was betrothed to Mary and had all these hopes and plans and dreams for his life with this young Nazarene maiden. And all of his plans that he had had for what that would be like died when he discovered that his betrothed was pregnant, right? And we're told in the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter, that being a righteous man, he had resolved to divorce her quietly, to do the right thing by her. And then an angel came to him in a dream and told him not to be afraid, see, not to act on that fear and look at life through that lens of fear. Do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife. For the child to be born in her is holy, and you, Joseph, shall name him Jesus, which means Savior, for he will save our people. So Joseph had to die to his dreams of what he had imagined life and marriage to Mary would be, and put that completely aside and just open himself, let himself be expanded to father 
the Savior of the world. May he be an example to us as we come to the end of this Lenten season. Our first lesson for today from Jeremiah 31 says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will um, make a new covenant with my people, with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob. And it will not be a covenant like the first covenant, which you broke, though I was your husband, says the Lord. But this will be the covenant that I will make with you in those days. I will put my law within you and I will write it on your heart and I will be your God and you will be my people and no longer will people have to say to one another and teach one another, know the Lord for they will all know me from the least to the greatest. We who are of the Christ Christian tradition celebrate Jesus Christ as that new covenant, that new promise of God for a new beginning. Each and every day of our lives, sisters and brothers, God gives us a new beginning to die to yesterday, to let go of our past, and to rise with Christ to the gift of each day, a new beginning. Remember, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, then it bears much fruit. As we come to the end of Lent and, and look forward to Holy Week, as we journey to the cross of Jesus, the heart of our faith as Christians. That symbol of the cross we know is a symbol, right? Like that hymn, the old rugged cross, as it's a symbol of suffering and shame. Only the worst criminals were crucified. Jesus not only took on death because of his love for the world, he took on the most shameful death, death on the cross. But sisters and brothers, we who are followers of Jesus, we who love Jesus Christ, we who look to him as our Savior, our Lord, for us that symbol of suffering and shame has become a tree of life. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. Today, Christ invites you. Are you willing to die in order to live? Amen. So each year we elect new uh, members to our leadership board at church called our church council. And during COVID, um, it's a bit challenging. They're all supposed to be installed and blessed at a worship service and some of them feel comfortable coming to in-person worship and some of them do not. So we're going to do this uh, part of our worship service um, for those who, we're going to do this part for those who um, uh, do not want to come to worship in person, aren't ready yet. And so the following persons have been elected by the congregation to serve as members of our church council. Karen Manning, who's our new president, she was installed in person. Kim Booten, our new vice president. John Subert, our secretary, who was installed in person. Paul Swanson, our treasurer. Nikki Erickson, our financial secretary. Um, Patty Otrondo, uh, Dr. Kim Nelson, our assistant treasurer, uh, Scott Lambert, who um, with his son, Zach Lambert, produce all of these videos, 
and our, our tech team. Um, Barbara Whipricht, who was installed in person. And I certainly hope that's it. Um, so, sisters and brothers, um, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his church. Through the word and the sacrament, you've been nurtured in faith. And so I ask you um, to share in the profession of faith, the faith in which we are baptized. Um, St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Lord gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for some particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. I ask you, uh, you are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect the one in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. And so the ones who still need to be installed are, again, Edith Johnson, Kim Booten, uh, Nikki Erickson, Scott Lambert, um, Paul Swanson, and Patty Otrondo. So I ask you, um, you will see a photograph of all of them you who are watching, and I ask all of you, you six, on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, are you ready to accept and faithfully to carry out the duties of the offices to which you've been elected? If so, say yes with the help of God. And then you, all of the members of the community, will you support these, your elected leaders, and share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, please join me in saying yes by the help of God. And so you six who I just named, Edith, Patty, Kim, Paul, Scott, and a missing one. Um, anyway, you know who you are. I now declare you installed as officers, council members of this congregation. God bless you and the Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen.
And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.